Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. So this morning, Melissa and I are on our way to an exposition. It is uh, a gift show, a place where retail stores can go and figure out what they're gonna buy wholesale. So uh, Melissa and I are going to come here and see if we can find some new stock for the store, for the new location. Um, and then by the time we order it and get it ready, it should be on its way and on the shelves uh, before October when we need it. So uh, we can't film inside because it's all top secret in there. But to give you an idea, um, there's a bunch of tables set up there's samples of different products, uh, toys, books, games, candies, whatever, and you pick out what you want to buy, you order it in bulk, and it gets shipped to your store. So we're going to go inside and uh, have a look-see and hopefully get some new products. Okay, gift show um, is over for us. I mean, there's lots of stuff to see there, but a lot of it doesn't make sense for the store. We did, however, meet a really nice family um, who what are they, they mainly just make and sell old-fashioned candies, which is going to be perfect for the general store. So, um, success? Yeah, it was super awesome. Now we just wait for a bunch of candy to show up at the door. Right. <laughs> Yay! Back at the store now, drop Melissa off at the house. Well, welcome back, Hans. And how are you doing there, Alex? Well, good. I see you're wearing a Sammy shirt today, though. You're not what? wearing the Curiosity Ink shirt. Well, you know, I like to support them, too. Eh? They, so. they do have a pretty good, uh, they got a mean hamburger over at Sammy's. Throw out your way. So you just wait until somebody just gives you a free t-shirt and then that's what you're wearing for the week? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I got my own plain ones, but I yeah. like to kind of mix it up a little oh, yeah. bit. And now you're back today, you're working on the soffits for us. Soffit face, yeah, yeah, we'll get that going. But, but we're missing I the ladder. See... Hmm. Uh, There's no ladder here, I see. I thought there might well, there, have been. There is a step ladder. I'll oh, show you if it'll work. Yeah, we'll have a look. See. I got. I've been moving stuff all around, <laughs> trying to make it look half decent in there. We got all stuff to put away. Let's see. Where did I put the step ladder? Oh, I guess I should close the front door. Oh, right, so people don't. Oh, there it is. It's right there. That's the only one I got right now. Well, that work for the bottom side. Take a look at my ladder, because it's the only one I got. So that should work for the sides, but getting up to that top part might be tricky unless you climb up on the roof, but. Uh, no, I have to figure something out. I'll let it all come together though. Okay, so while you're working Where on, there's a will, there's a way. I believe Where you. Where there's a way, there's a will. <laughs> I've been working on getting the baseboard trim in getting some old signs put up in the back, which there's gonna be more, just have to hang them up. And I have to do something with trimming out this window so it looks a little bit nicer. Now Josh says that he's got a plan for that one. He said, dude, don't worry, it's gonna be awesome. I am not worried, I'm sure it will be, so I'm leaving that for him to do. But this one, I think I've got an idea for. We have some of the old trim that was left over from the top of the shelving unit. I'm gonna measure it, trim it down, and, uh, See if I can come up with an interesting design with what I have left. Well, I still have to clean this window off a fair bit, but at least I was able to recycle some of the old trim that we saved and bits and pieces from lying around the yard and uh, now have at least some trim around that window. So Hans is back there busy getting the soffits put on. I have to run out because I got a call that uh, there's a lady with some antiques for sale. I make it sound like there's an emergency, but it's not. Um, but we are going to go see if there's anything cool to buy. So I'm taking a pit stop away from my project here. I'm going to go see if I can add some inventory to the store. I got myself a moving box full of old toys. Before I bring those into the shop, though, I'm going to go over and see how Hans is doing on the soffits. Looks like he has been busy and you can see uh, when the guys did the soffits, they just put the gutter right on top. Now we are putting the soffit covers on as you're supposed to do. So we had to take the gutters down. A little bit of backtracking, but uh, Hans has got me on the right track. We're gonna do it right, get it done. How's it going there, Hans? Hey, not bad, starting to get fascia up. Yeah, fascia's looking and, good. Uh, we could put uh, the east trough back up there when I get this piece in there. Okay. 
and that could be off the ground and then it's not a tripping hazard. Yeah, I can help you out with that. I got a box of old toys that I bought off that lady, so oh, I'm gonna go perfect. unpack those and get them set up in the store. Any uh, any customers come by? People, well, not customers, but people who are curious. Uh, not that I seen today, but. Cadillac full of toys. decided that this area is where the modern sort of toys are gonna go with the stuffed animals and Hot Wheels and whatever else in the bins. Old toy cars like Matchbox, Redline Hot Wheels, things of that nature will go into these drawers here. And then um, this showcase here will be kind of like the more expensive, more valuable toys with a little bit on the back and candy counter on top. So it'll have a fun element to it. So a lot of this stuff I bought today is gonna go kind of in this area. I'm gonna start unpacking and see exactly what I have. What did I pick up? Well, a nice little Corgi fire truck. Of course, Corgi's been around for a long time, British company, um, doing nice quality die cast. This one is a limited edition, but of course when they say limited, that means there's you know, probably a, a thousand or 1500 of them, but still, neat little piece. Thought this was cool. My dad was a big Roy Rogers fan, so I have a bit of a soft spot when I see Roy Rogers stuff. Um, 49 International with the Roy Rogers cookies logo on the back. Just kind of a neat thing. And there are still guys who collect this. This was really popular back in the 2000s. This one's from 2002. This probably would have been over $100 when it was new. It's still worth over $100 because they don't make them anymore. Uh, it's kind of a neat one. Volkswagen Carmen Ghia press tin. This uh, bumpy bottom tells me it's probably a little bit on the newer side, you know, maybe 1970s or so, but oh, kind of cool. And there's lots of Volkswagen collectors out there. So even though it's got a little corrosion on the chrome trim, it'll still be able to find a home. There's another one here. Sometimes things are lost in translation. I'm not uh, able to read Chinese script. However, I can tell you that photoing on car is probably not the best use of English to describe uh, somebody taking pictures from their car. But that said, it has a mystery action, the horn sounding and the headlight flashing when it starts, the girl taking photo when it stops. Um, so you look at this, you take it out of the box and what do we have? Kind of a cute little tin toy uh, with these little figures. Let's see if I get that out there, there we go. Got some weight to it actually. There it is right there. So I guess it starts and stops and goes and the girl takes a picture and the flash probably lights up, drives around, battery operated. And you always wanna make sure that battery trays aren't completely rotted out. This one's nice and clean. Uh, if I had some D-cell batteries kicking around, I could test it out. I'll have to do that another time, but uh, neat little pieces. Arms come a little bit off, but overall not too bad. I'll put that aside. Little pressed steel toy. It's not tin, but it did have a Friction motor or key line motor at one point. I wonder if all the bits are inside there. It probably had a start stop lever here that seems to be missing, but cool looking piece. It kind of looks like Dick Tracy should be driving around in that thing. It's kind of evil cool, but um, yeah, old. I would say, you know, 1930s, maybe early 40s on that, because of course the war slowed down the production of a lot of things and they weren't made out of metal, so that would probably be pre war. Nice early piece. Tin plate Rolls Royce. Does it have all its hubcaps? Yes, it does. And this is an early Japanese one. When you see Japan, that tells you it's a little bit earlier piece. So that is from the 50s. Later, they made them in China. Actually, they still make them in China. But kind of a neat one. And those I know are all Franklin Mint, which I'll get out of the box later on display. That's a little Texaco airplane. It's a smaller box. Aha, I know what this is. This is a Shuko, I think they're called Exam, yeah, Examico. But they have a working gear shifter, forward and reverse. They've got a little stop uh, and start, like an emergency brake. Every kind of function you can imagine, this thing pretty much does like a real car. You can steer it. I actually collect these. So this is one, and it has the windshield on it still too. This is one I think I'm going to take home. Don't take much home. That's coming home though. What else is in here? like some possibly some dinky toys little 
die cast wrapped up for some apparent reason. That is a dinky toy. Missing his rubber wheels, but I have replacements, a little forklift. Not overly valuable, but still cool. The back off of a moving van. Let's see if the front is in here. Another Franklin Mint car down there. Oh, here's the front of the moving van. Looks to be a French model. Nice little piece. So I'm gonna get all this stuff out and then I'll start doing a decoration on the back wall here with some of these neat old toys and things to complement the other stuff I've got out. Hands is doing it right. Hey man, we're doing it right. Yeah, we got Mixing the it. proper fascia on now. And we've got the uh, gutter going back up. So that's better, much more weatherproof than what it was before. Glad to help my buddy out. A little bit of fascia short, so I picked it up this morning. Yeah. And then now I'll just finish it off. Well, it's looking really nice. Uh, it's way better. You know, they had left the wood all exposed. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do is put the fascia on, right? Yeah, no, that's just the finishing touches, eh? Yeah, I'll have to come over at some point and paint this trim board that's kind of on there. Well, right we'll now. paint it hot pick for you. That'll look really sharp on white, won't it? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll do the same thing to your truck, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's only fair. <laughs> Oh, the stripes on it, eh? Oh, no, the whole thing. I'll well, do the whole stripes, truck hot man, pick. Just stripes. That'll look really cool on blue. <laughs> All day, I've pretty much been uh, going through the shop and getting stuff loaded into my car. I've been working today. I actually put the back in 30 minutes sign up because I'm uh, playing hooky from the store to get some product moved over. So I'm back here now. I can see Hans is behind me, still working away on the uh, gutters. He's got to be just about done. I've got an offload, a car full of merchandise get it moved into the shop and then uh, go check on hands. I'll start getting some product on the front shelves here. These are kind of fun items that are made by a company called Fred. They do like the uh, magic salt and pepper shaker, I guess. So when you're at the table, it's like, voila, there's your salt and pepper. Uh, the Lucky Bird, you remember those that drank out of a cup? Um, sugar skull, sugar shakers, just fun stuff. An upside down beer bottle, um, you know, little drinking bit. So we'll have that, the t-shirts. <laughs> this was kind of funny. Tea Titanic. It's a tea uh, infuser. So you put your tea, raw tea leaves inside the Titanic and watch it sink. Maybe a little bit on the morbid side, but kind of cute. My wife got this one for Christmas last year. Mr. T, who looks like he's uh, peeing in your bathtub. And the longer he sits, the darker the water gets. <laughs> oh, nose hair trimmer. We were saying, hey, hands, that if, if you tried this oh. out, it might just tangle up the whole works there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, give me my head back. Yeah, you'd have to get the industrial version. <laughs> That's looking good. Thanks for your help emptying out the car, by the way. No problem. So do you want to show me what you did out back there? You bet. Okay. Let's go have a look. Way better. We've got the fascia on, the soffits are on, which is probably what we should have done before the guys put the gutter on, but I couldn't get to them quick enough to hold off on that. This side is all complete. Looks like a brand new building pretty well with this siding on there. You'd never know this was a derelict shack just a couple weeks ago that we thought would have to be torn down. Now it looks, uh, you know, as modern as the building next to it, but not too modern. We left the old porch on. So when you're standing on this side of the building, which is the business side of the building, it still has that old fashioned feel. So I'll probably end up painting this part out. Uh, I've got to put a, a siding over top of that hole there, but Hands are just getting packed out and then uh, we'll call it a day out here today. So as I'm renovating and working, we had a uh, friendly face show up at the door. A while back, I had a gentleman send me this really cool cowboy boot birdhouse, which we found a spot for in the tree. And he makes these by hand, but um, he's actually here with us today and he's brought his daughter. So first you send us this amazing cowboy boot, plus another one, and you do such a nice job. I have to show people that I didn't before. You take a cowboy boot, if I'm correct. Yes. And a stove pipe, is it? A stove inside? pipe inside. And how many layers of lacquer on top here? Uh, there's about an uh, hour to two hours of shellac on there. Two hours of shellac, okay. And you top it all off with a license plate. Now this is your company? Yeah, he'll, it's, yeah. Okay, so 
if somebody writes you and they want to buy one of those. Yes, they can. They can, and you'll mail it out to them. What a yes. novel idea. And I thought, how cool is that to have sitting in the tree? So what got you started on building cowboy boot birdhouses? I, I just been putching around things to do when I'm off duty and it's kind of a fun little hobby and I make other things out of life someplace. I don't have a website. That's down the road when I retire, so. So they I, can they can write you on the address yes, there? Or? Yes, Alex okay. has the address, so you can write Alex and he can give you my address. I'll put it in the description down below. I'll, if you've got an email, we can add it. So do I've that. done a lot of them where people want their automatum on there or their uh, state or some type of special wording. I can do that too. It's a little extra money for that stuff. So, But $35 for a cute little birdhouse is not bad. And we're talking 35 US because you're not from around here. No, 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 Where no, are you no. from? Seattle, Washington. You and, tell by the accent. And, well, uh, you, you know, being as far north in the in, in the US and we're in Canada, you know, there's less. You didn't say Washington, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that you came all the way down today. And we love the birdhouse. It's got a little happy home here in the backyard. I don't think we've had a bird inhabit it yet, but it looks really great. I uh, hope that somebody decides to get one from you. I mean, appreciate you bringing it down. Thanks, Alex. I also popped over to the local fireplace and stove shop to see about finding a new fireplace for the store. So trying to find something classic and old fashioned. Hopefully we'll be able to get something today and uh, get it installed soon because winter is going to be hitting before we know it and uh, don't want to be freezing in that back room. Initially, I was looking at this model here, which is uh, sort of a porcelain enamel finish. It looks old. It has to exhaust straight out the back. So I kind of wanted one that comes up and uh, vents over. But uh, the challenge with this is that the codes have changed and you can't um, put in a new build, one that doesn't have an electric um, pilot light on it. So we are looking and look, they have old fashioned retro fridges and stoves. Um, actually, I'm going to sidetrack here. You can still buy, check this out. This stove is completely unrelated, but look, it's a modern cooktop, but it looks like a, you know, turn of the century cast iron stove. That's really neat. This place has all kinds of cool stuff. So if you wanted a different sort of look for your house, but what I'm here looking at is probably this guy. Now it's, I don't like the finish as much. I did like the glossy finish that the other one had, but it does have the traditional stove pipe that comes out and up, or you can elbow it and put it out, which is what we would do. And I think that's going to give me more of the look I want. So we're trying to figure out what the price is going to be. And uh, hopefully we can come to a number that works for us and get the get that guy installed. Okay, well, the fireplace is way more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Uh, $4,600 installed. Um, I'd budget for like maybe 2,500 bucks to get heat in that room. So I'm going to have to really weigh my options, uh, whether to find a used one somewhere or um, maybe there's another store. So I'm headed over to another fireplace uh, store to see if perhaps they have better prices. They close in like five minutes uh, as I price check here. So I've got to hustle my butt over there and um, see if I can get some other options. But yeah, not really uh, anticipating that big of a hit on uh, heating that room. Scary thought. Okay, got back from the second shop. Pretty much they sell the same products as the first one, but um, already I can tell their installation fees and the price for parts is less than half of the other guys. So even if the price of the unit comes back the same, I'll be saving almost $1,000 by going with the new store. Um, I'm gonna wait to hear back from them tomorrow morning and if all things uh, go ahead, I will likely just go ahead and get those guys booked. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna uh, hold tight. And uh, we've also decided to move up the date of our closure of our current location. Um, really just need to focus on selling that space. So we'll move our product over to the new space and wait for um, zoning and appeals and whatever has to happen. Uh, feeling stressed, but also feeling excited for the change. Um, so th that's happening. <laughs> I really am feeling a little bit stressed about it, but I'm going to try very hard not to let my family see the stress on me and uh, just continue to be a dad and be supportive and be there for them. But um, yeah, I booked a moving truck for next week and then we're going to start moving everything over the new spot. Since this Friday, in just a couple days, is going to be the last day at the store, I've taken the opportunity to fill the old Cadillac up with all sorts of stuff from around the store that I uh, think might not have a home at the new spot. So this World War II jerry can, uh, even these old oars behind me, and yes, I had the oars in the Cadillac, and I know it's a boat. Uh, I'm going to take them into Kastner auctions here and get them auctioned off this weekend with a whole bunch of other things. Uh, I think they're doing a specialty sale for me, and um, that money will help go towards some of the renovations that we're doing and the move and it's just kind of nice to clean house. Okay, well that's 
today's batch we've brought everything from an antique railway lantern some little lanterns there advertising pencils sock stretchers fishing lures and whatever it goes for it goes for you don't know until the auction happens but it's a nice way to clean house and get some money back in your pocket greg has come to help me move some things over and folks are so nice a lady showed up from calgary and she has offered, she saw us on YouTube, has offered to start bringing some toys in from the back of the Cadillac. What, what uh, part of Calgary are you from? Uh, actually, I live in Saddle Ridge in the far northeast corner. And here you are, you saw us on YouTube, and now you're emptying out the trunk of my car for me. <laughs> That's... I, I'm just becoming a part of the story. Yes, you are. <laughs> I appreciate the help, too. We are putting all these old toys um, that I deemed worthy enough um, to put them in the showcase here and do a little display. And uh, super nice for her to help out. That's it for this week's episode. I'm back home now. I realized today that with uh, Patrick uh, helping me out at the shop tomorrow, that today was the last day I will have worked a shift at my old location. We're closing it down Friday. Uh, really, I'm starting to empty stuff out the next day or two here. And I'm nervous. Um, I have no idea what the future is going to hold uh, right now, today, this episode as it goes out there. Um, I'm moving forward without knowing what the future is gonna, uh, what's gonna happen. But um, I am proceeding to get some work done. Uh, next episode, we're going to show some work getting done in the back room. Josh and Dakota will return to help us out with uh, some of the other uh, work that needed to get finished up. Uh, we're going to have the landscapers come and build us a little parking pad in the backyard and fix the grading issue that we had on the side of the building. So hopefully we don't get water in the basement. Uh, as has happened for a number of years before and we're hoping to crack that. Uh, lots more work to go and uh, yeah, that's about it for today's update. So thank you very much for watching this episode, guys. Make sure to keep watching as the store progresses and you need to find out what happens. Do we get the zoning? What's going on? More updates coming soon. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys soon and bye for now.